Shalom, everyone. What a great story. Story after story. I love the book of Genesis. Maybe you like Romans better, but doggone it, narratives sell, you know? And 17 times in the book of Genesis, the word chen or chanan, meaning grace, is used. One third of them in this story. And I love that. I want you to get a picture of grace coming out of this. Genesis 32, 33 was one of my favorites uh, when I grew up. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, these are our heroes. These are the patriarchs. These are the people I learned, I studied. Because every year we Jews read through the Torah. Genesis through Deuteronomy, go back to Genesis. Deuteronomy, Genesis through Deuteronomy. And I know there's Joshua and I know there's Proverbs, but we stayed in Torah. That was the regular cycle of readings. Jacob, one of my heroes, not because of some of the underhanded things he did. His early days, you know, his, his name is Yaakov. Akov, the, uh, the three letters, Akov, to, it was, means the heel. And Yaakov, the taker of the heel. So, it, you know, Jacob and Esau, they're twins, they're brothers. You know how boys are. You know how twins are. You know, there's a little sibling rivalry that was fairly expansive in the book of Genesis. In fact, if you read Genesis like a psychiatrist in 2023, you'd say there's some serious dysfunction going on here. And that's okay, because we learn to live with that. We learn lessons from that. So here's Jacob, who's the supplanter. You might have heard that nickname applied to him, the one who took the heel of and replaced the brother as he came out of the womb. Strange story. And 20 years before our episode today, he manipulated the situation and got the father's blessing and got his brother's birthright. So he's not exactly behaving like a the ducks in your children's school that you want. He's not exactly kosher. There's some really wrong behaviors going on. He's trying to get, and he gets it from his uncle Laban, the same thing. He's really got some pattern of almost thievery. And I don't know how you feel when you get caught doing wrong, not that you do much wrong. I mean, some of you that's another story, but uh, okay, so talk to you about yourself, Bob. When I do wrong, what do I do about that when I get caught? My wife catches me doing this. My daughter sees that I'm not exactly the loving father I need to be. You, you get the idea. What do you do, do wrong? What do you do when you get caught? What did Jacob do? Over two decades, he's lived with the not so well done behavior of stealing the blessing and getting the birthright of his brother. 20 years. What if I ever see my brother again? And the story begins that he hears that Esau is coming to meet him. Esau, his other nickname is Edom, meaning red. If you went to school with a redheaded kid, what'd you call him? Bluey, right, okay. As an American, I can't figure that out, but I, I'm learning. I've only been here 25 years, I'm still learning. So Bluey is coming to meet you from the land of Edom, which means red. And Jacob is sure that Esau remembers every blooming thing his brother deserved that he stole. And he's got Machanayim, two camps. Not three camps, he's got two camps. He came with a stick and now he's got two camps full. That's just massive. What's my brother coming? He's coming to collect, obviously. He's coming to get back what rightfully is his. And all those two decades plus of his own worry is coming to meet him as well. Do you feel the danger, the worry, the apprehension that's in him. So he says, I'm going to divide the two groups. And then he prays. Now, Jacob is not a man of prayer. Have you ever seen him pray in the record of scripture before? This is his first prayer. It's not now I lay me down to sleep. It's pretty close. 
He says, God of my father, God of my grandfather, you who, I mean, he doesn't say my God, does he? God of my grandfather, Abraham, God of my father, Isaac. Could I slip in? Could I, could I be included in this covenantal thing? He's not exactly, yo, I got this. Come on, kids, let's pray together. He's, he doesn't know. In fact, he uses a word in verse number 10 that is one of my favorites ever. When I think about prayer, I think of this one word. I don't know what it says in your version. Mine says, I am unworthy. Was that what yours said, saying? The Hebrew word is katanti, katan meaning little. I'm little. I'm little for a man who's full of himself is a, not an easy thing to say. It's the greatest thing a man can say. I'm, I'm not, you are. Isn't that what prayer is? I'm not able, I'm not confident, I'm not strong, I'm not big. I look big, I've got two camps of people, but katanti, katan, I'm little. I'm 71, and I look back over my years, over my decades, and think, when did it work? When did this religion, which I boast, work when I'm not? and when he is, when I recognize my littleness and his bigness, that's when this works. Not when I say, I've got the promises of God, here's a promise, I'm gonna claim that pro It doesn't work. I mean, maybe for some it does, God bless them, but for me, it works when I say, katanti. And if you don't remember anything else from this talk today, remember that word, I'm not. That's what I summarize prayer to people. I say, prayer is recognizing you're not and he is. In fact, religion is I'm not and he is. In fact, the ones that work is when I'm not and he is. Katanti, you're the God of my dad. Maybe I can sneak in. And then he says, save me in verse 11. Save me, that's save me, because I'm afraid. What's he afraid of? Recompense. He's afraid of losing Machanaim. He's afraid of losing his kids. Yeah, that's included. But he's really afraid that Esau is coming back to collect and to take his life. I get that. I like in verse 16 where he says, keep space between you, you guys. You know, like if he comes and attacks the first mob, the second can run. You'll be fine, right? Where are they going to go? He's got 400 men. I mean, it's one thing when Esau is coming back to a consultation or the G7 or something, and there's two or three in his, in his group, but there are 400 men in his entourage. This is an army. So he starts with, here's, here's some ideas. Verse 18. Uh, let him know your servant. How many times does he say your servant in this in this in this uh, pericope? It's just pretty remarkable. And he says maybe maybe what I send ahead with the flocks and the goats and the sheep and the ever, uh, twenty of these and forty of those, maybe that will what did our version say? Pacify him. The Hebrew word is kafar, meaning atone like Yom Kippur. It also means cover, almost sounds like the Hebrew kavar, kafar, cover. It's used uh, many times throughout the scriptures for ransom, pacify, cover. Maybe I can make right with this. Make right with this, hundreds of these and 20 of those and 40 of those. No, that's not gonna do it. We've got 20 years of reparations. This is National Reconciliation Week in Australia. I've never been here making things messy between 
races. I never stole any person. And maybe you think that as well at times when they say this is a time to make right between races. The word race is gone, by the way, in anthropological terms. Nobody uses the word race anymore. They talk about ethnicity now, and they got rid of the word race. But if you were of a people whose generation was stolen, you keep track. I've never been a stealer of another person's life. But the world is a mess. And if we're going to get it right, we have to send 20 of those and 40 of those and recognize Katanti. I'm too little. Let's get right. Let's reconcile. Let's make this thing work. And so he sends all these ahead and he's prayed the prayer and he's hoped that this thing is going to work. And then he has a wrestling match. A wrestling match with something is it God? Is it the face of God that he meets? Is it, I mean, he calls it Penny L. I've wrestled with God. L means God, not an angel of God. And the angel manipulates him and knocks out his thigh. And, you know, he, he's, um, he's got a dislocated something. And I love the way, if you, if you want to know how Jewish people think as they read the scripture and draw from and draw from and draw from previous presidential rulings, this is a great example of it. That's why we don't eat certain food. You think, how do you get that from a guy having a wrestling match? That's how we get it. That's exactly how we get it. But that wrestling match is something that is so real because I think it's a direct response to Jacob's prayer. His prayer was, can we work this out? Can we reconcile? And they wrestle. And it's Anatoly. It's the breaking. That's a Greek word. It's also a Russian word. It means dawn, the breaking of day, the daybreak, day spring. And he gets a blessing. Not the blessing that he had from his father, Isaac, decades earlier. No, this is the blessing of God himself particularly in answer to the, I'm not worthy. And he gets it. And chapter 33 almost begins with fear on steroids as he sees his brother and 400 men running towards him. <laughs> now that's that's got to put the fear in him, right? Like, oh, I thought this worked. I thought this, and he comes and embraces him. He doesn't pick up a hammer to destroy him. He doesn't have a weapon of war. He has a weapon of love, and he welcomes his brother. And instant restoration occurs. It's anticipated. It's the anticipation of what's going to happen with Joseph and his brothers in the next generation, in the next segment of the book of Genesis. Restoration is so holy. And if you've had that in any of your family situations where you don't talk with anybody, those people, that I could never talk to that sister-in-law or that nephew. You know, they mistreated. I'm never going to. And then for whatever reason and however it accomplishes, there's restoration. There's reconciliation. There's something awesomely deep and real about that. And as a foreigner who became a citizen of Australia, uh, when, I don't know, 12 years ago, I'm new to First Nations troubles and invaders on Australia Day. I'm new to that language. I'm new to the situation of trouble. But I'll tell you that when reconciliation happens, that peace is is glorious. And I long for that in our peoples of Australia. 
I'm an outsider. So I'm not telling anybody how to do anything except get saved and be born again. And I mean, I do that. That I know because we're all outside God's kingdom and we all need reconciliation with him. That I get because I was outside, though a Jew and a natural insider. Even then, I get it that we all need repair with the God who's fairly distant or sometimes close, but still distant and remote. We need that kapar, that kafar, that atonement, that ransom. We need that placation with the Almighty. I get that. And how you here at San Susi, and if you're, this is being live streamed, isn't it? Or, or recorded? Or so you watching at home or in your church of the pajamas, or if you're in jail or wherever you are watching this, you there, you here in the nave, each of us needs to make it happen in our own world. I don't know how you're going to do it. You have to do it with you and God and your family. You sort that out and decide what actions you're going to take, what stories you're going to tell, what relations you're going to maintain, and, and prejudices you're going to drop. That I'm not going to tell you what to do or how to do it particularly. God's pretty good. He can do that. He can help you. Your job, katanti, I'm too little. And then when you watch your brother come with 400 assaulting army agents, you stand there and say, whoa, there's a hug and not a hit. I'm taking that on board. What can I do to make, not National Reconciliation Week, although that's fine, what can I do to make the life of God real in the life of my next door neighbor or my cousin? What can I do? What can we do? Esau ran and Jacob wept. And he said, the children. I mean, I love that Esau wanted to know, how's the family? How's the family? Like, what's been going on? Can I see the journal? Can I see your Facebook photos? I mean, this is so genuine. He really wants to know. I mean, Jacob kept saying, my Lord, my Lord, your servant, my Lord, your servant, right? He tried to say, you know, whatever I need to do. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. And he said, let me see the pictures of the kids. It was just beautiful. Of course, the kids were there. One-third of the 17 times in the book of Genesis, chan, chen, chanan, the word for grace is used right here in this, in this section. One-third of the time. You can't miss it. Grace is what we see, what we see extended. If there's anything that's going to work in my life today, as autumn, is this really autumn? Autumn ends and winter is coming. There's something worse. Winter is coming. And I meet you again. Some of you I met last year and some before that. Some for the first time I'm meeting you. What can we do together to make reconciliation real? We're ambassadors, if I remember right. In the book of Corinthians, the Apostle Paul makes clear that God's given us a ministry of reconciliation. That's what I want. I want to reconcile, reconcile. I want to make people conciliatory. I want to make people in good relation with each other. My number one concern is that you're related well to God. You get that right, everything else should fall into place. Now it's not the God of your father and the God of your granddaddy. Now it's your God. You get God right, he'll get you right. That's the idea. National Reconciliation Week or next week or the middle of Vivid or long after Vivid is gone. Whenever it is, what are we going to do? Let's live in such a way that we do call on him to to strengthen us, to give grace to others. Well, that's my charge as I read this today. I, I try to live this way. We'll talk to anybody.
and bring reconciliation to anyone. And maybe you'll do the same right here. I hope that you'll fill out that card. Here it is. The slip that was on your Bible. Can you see there's a perforation? We paid extra money for the perf. Um, can you see there's, there's a perforation there? So just bend it on, on the perforation and then there you go. Tear it right there and you'll have two slips. One, the large one is for you. The small one is for me after you put your name and details on there. I hope you'll do that. By doing that, you've, you extend to us the privilege to speak to you again. Yeah, it's right there. Just, it's perfect. You can't see. It's not really strong perforation. Pay extra. Uh, so hold on to that large section. It's got our address. And it, like everything since COVID hit, there's a QR code. Always. The small part, name and details. Yeah, whatever you want to tell me about yourself, that would be kind so that you can receive our newsletter. We send it out. The latest one just hit this week. Maybe you got that. This is um, stories of what happens to us, questions, answers. What's God, what's God doing around the globe among Jewish people? We want you to get that. If you're watching elsewhere, you can just Google Jews, Jesus, and Australia. It'll get right to us. There's an envelope on your place, and you can use that to make donations to Jews for Jesus. You can hit that QR code, and it goes right to our website as well. I want to recommend a book. It is on the, in, the, in the auditorium, in the hall, right, where we're having morning tea. Will it be warmer there? Why didn't we have church there then? Okay. No overhead. I get it. All right. This book is called Mere Evangelism. Sounds like C.S. Lewis, the guy who wrote it, a Jewish man who loves Jesus, um, works for the C.S. Lewis Institute. And this book is so great on helping you how to share, in spite of your uneasiness, with your next door neighbor or friends or enemies, whoever it is, uh, via questions and story. Really useful. Do you know that this story that we read today is a great device in sharing what God wants with each one of us? God wants with my neighbor. Story is a great way to communicate. I hope this means something to you today. God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself. And he's given us that ministry of reconciliation. Shalom.